Hello everybody, it is Margaret and welcome to my channel, Texas Gal Treasures. Today I'm bringing you a video about what I look for when I'm out and about shopping for jewelry at estate sales, garage sales, thrift stores. If you've been watching my channel for any length of time, you know that I am a jewelry junkie, big time. I love to pick it up, I love to keep it, I love to sell it. It is a lot of fun and it's something that I've definitely gotten more and more into. If you're new here, well, that's part of what I do. I pick up things at garage sales, thrift stores, and estate sales to flip to make some extra money on eBay and Etsy. I do some other things too, like print on demand stuff, but today we're talking jewelry. Now I do have, this started off as it was going to be a jewelry haul, and I get so many questions about what do you look for when you're looking at jewelry? It's so overwhelming, especially when you're first getting into it. I thought I would kind of do a twist on the haul video, and I might start doing this in the future Instead of just doing a straight, like, here's what I got, take a look at it, uh, and this is kind of why what I think I'll get, I decided I would start doing something more like um, kind of talking you through why I picked up what I did, because I think it might be beneficial for you guys when you are out, especially if you're new. Uh, so, yeah. Um, hello. I am live. So if you're watching later and you're like, oh, um, I, I see you talking to people that aren't there. I don't have the chat up today, but I am live. So hello, everybody in the chat. Uh, I'm gonna, if, if, if questions come in, then I'll uh, pop pop up, or not rather not pop up the questions, but but answer them as I go. But let me get some of my, my spiel out first. So first couple tips before I start showing you and diving into some of the things I picked up and wanted to share is if you're just new, getting started looking for jewelry and you're wanting to kind of get into it, um, it's great, first of all, because it's small. You can usually get it for pretty cheap if you if you hit the right garage sales or thrift stores, and you can make a pretty good profit off of it. Um, and then you can find nice stuff for yourself too. If you're into that, like uh, these are some earrings I got at Goodwill, I think for two ninety nine, and they're really sweet. I, I could probably sell them very easily for you know twenty bucks if I so chose to do so. But right now they are staying with me. So that's that's part of the perks as well as getting to pick nice stuff for yourself. So one of the things that I would suggest if you're really new getting into it is start with something you're comfortable with. Start with something you know. My my gateway jewel or my gateway <laughs> jewelry was men's accessories. It was really easy for me to hone in on that and say, okay, I'm looking for cufflinks and tie bars and tie tacks and collar pins and things like that because I can really just focus on those things, um, see what wasn't damaged. And I have had really good luck with that. I found, because a lot of times, especially at garage sales and things, when the families or, or even at thrift stores, I found um, they don't look as hard at the men's jewelry, you know, uh, as the ladies jewelry. So sometimes it just goes into a bag or they'll blot it all up and say, here, you know, take it for a dime. And I've gotten, you know, 14 karat gold cufflinks and tie tack that I ended up selling for $400 that I picked up for $4. So that was a really great way for me to jump into it and then slowly just start expanding out. Um, and as I started looking at other things, I started realizing, well, I know a little bit more than I then I gave myself credit for, you know, I'll start looking at, okay, I can tell that that's probably silver because I know it's tarnished, you know, or the way silver tarnishes. I know what these stones are. And so slowly broadening and, and then taking chances on things. So that would be my last tip is if you're out there, you know, scan, scan the jewelry. Maybe if you're not ready to, to really dive in deep, you know, scan over the jewelry when you're at garage sales or thrift stores, take, just take a look at it and familiarize yourself with it, you'll start seeing like, oh, I see that kind of like bracelet all the time. Or I see that kind of, you know, kind of necklace with the plastic things on it all the time. It's pretty common. And then you'll start, so other things will start um, standing out to you where you'll say, wow, that's, that's unusual. I haven't seen that before. Or in the back of your mind, maybe you've seen something in a video or in one of the, you know, have a jewelry group and you'll say, oh wait, you know, Cindy posted something like that in the group or, you know, so that's another way to kind of get into it is, is being in a group, being, you know, around other people that are sharing these kind of things and having that kind of knowledge or not really knowledge, but just kind of like a little, you know, sticky note, post a note <laughs> in your brain that's saying, oh yeah, I saw that in a group or I saw that on a video. So that's, those are some tips for getting started for sure. 
So I'm going to share with you some of the things I picked up. Most of this is from Goodwill. Some of it's from a garage sale. There are a couple pieces I pulled out from previous hauls just as another, like, take a look at this. This is why I picked this up um, kind of thing. So let me check the chat real quick, and then we'll jump into uh, the, the stuff. <laughs> I think I'm crazy talking to imaginary friends. Well, they wouldn't be far off, would they? <laughs> hello, hello. Oh, no. Okay. A unique resale says, everything real gold I have bought has been men's. And that's another thing. So so that was at one um, garage sale where I got those. Well, at, an, at another thrift store, I picked up some cufflinks that had um, – British hallmarks on them. So they were cufflinks, they had British hallmarks, they were super heavy. And I ended up taking them to to sell for like scrap. I know I know the guy that was gonna that I sold them to is probably not gonna scrap them because they were really high quality. Um, but I was able to walk out of there with like 400 or 450, 450 bucks. So he because of the quality and he also sold jewelry, he is probably going to sell them, or that's what I'm thinking. But I was thinking to myself you know, a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. So I was ready for that cash in hand and I didn't want to deal with, you know, listing it and oh, anyway. So definitely take a peek at the men's cufflinks, accessories, that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, they, they usually value the men's stuff less. I, there are, there are things, these, I don't, I don't have any here with me, but they're collar pins. I think in my video, what is this thing? I have a video like, what is this? Um, these collar pins, that I, I pick up one time I got three for a dime and I sell them for $20 a piece. So just knowing like, oh yeah, that's what that is. And it's, it's a dime. I can flip it for 20 bucks and it's like this big. I can stick it in a drawer. I got a blister on my hand. Okay. Anyway, no, 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 you didn't miss anything. Okay. So here we go. Yes. Hit the like button friends. Um, I'm jumping into this, but hit the like button, and I would love to have you guys subscribe. If you haven't already, go. I have a, a giveaway open, so the video right before this one. All right, so today I went to Goodwill, and some of this was from another Goodwill trip, but let me just let me just go with it. Um, I did look up a few things, so I'll share with you, but I just wanted to show you and then talk about why I got it. So the first pin is this one. Pardon my blister. <laughs> Maybe I should use my other hand. So I've got this pin. The reason I got it, um, one, it reminds me of like Maxwell Parrish or it's kind of got that art, not exactly Art Nouveau look, but that kind of like watercolor look, um, little pansies, it's open work. It looks like it's pretty well done. It's not marked. It doesn't have a maker's mark. That blister is gonna drive me nuts. It doesn't have a maker's mark. I didn't actually take the, the uh, tag off to see if there's any marks on the, the stem of the pin. But the reason I got it was there are people that are really into different kinds of flowers. They've got, just like with anything, people have things that they collect. Uh, and so these colors, the blues, the greens, the flowers is going to appeal to somebody. Yeah, it's got the stained glass look, exactly. So I'm peeling this off to see. I don't see any kind of marks on there. But um, I paid $2.99 for that. I didn't look it up, but my guess is that I'll, I'll probably be able to sell it for anywhere between $15 and $20, depending on what I find out there. Um, so some of the things that I carry with me, I usually have a better magnet than this, but this one works, uh, is a magnet. I have a loop that I carry. And then I also, once I really got serious into selling jewelry, I got a gold testing kit. So I wouldn't have to keep going to the, the gold guy to test my stuff for me. So if you're interested, I have links down below for real jewelry magnets. So there's that. That's the first one. And um, that was $2.99. And then the next thing that I picked up, all of the brooches were $2.99 at this Goodwill. So this is another brooch I picked up. Again, kind of for the same reason. There are people that are really into, what are these, irises or lilies and hummingbirds. It's got this nice open work. I'm trying to get it not on my my computer, but it, you know, the shininess on it. It's really shiny, so it's kind of hard to see. Uh, but it's got a nice butter um, hummingbird. And another reason, uh, when I tell people I kind of look for quality, I wish I had a bad quality one so I could 
could give you an example, but the quality, the way it's made, the way it's cut out looks really crisp and clean. The lines don't look, ja I don't know, jagged or the finish doesn't look like really thick and gloppy. I don't know how to, if you know jewelry, you know what I'm talking about. So it's really clean lines, really, the finish is really nice. And um, this one is also marked. And that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be worth more, um, which is another question I get a lot. Well, you know, why would you pick something up that, you know, I found a pin, but it wasn't marked, so I didn't buy it. Sometimes it doesn't matter. If somebody is interested in the hummingbirds, they're going to buy a hummingbird brooch. If somebody is interested here, I'll show you this. It, they're really into sand dollars. It won't matter that it's not marked. They'll like the look of it. They'll like the size of it. They'll like the shape of it, the color, whatever. So this one happens to be marked uh, Wild Bird, and it's spelled with a B-Y-R-D-E. And I did look this one up, so let me share with you. Now this one, uh, where did it go? I found quite a few, I found one pretty much the same, but I think I would probably still try to sell mine for more. Let me open it up and share with you. This is on Etsy, these are ones that are up there. So the brand, Wild Bird, bride wild bride i keep saying bird maybe because it's a bird on it um it has this kind of open work style but honestly i think they they could get more for their pieces like i really think somebody would pay more for it than that um but however i i mean i personally price my stuff pretty high because i just do so uh so here it is this is pretty much the same one for 14 dollars Again, I'll still probably price mine higher than that. Look at this one, isn't that beautiful? So $22.99, so there's that. Um, the reason I tend to price higher is, one, sometimes there's, there's a perceived value where people will think that it's a better quality, even if they see the same thing. If there's, I mean, if the pictures are really good and the price may be a little bit higher, sometimes there's that perceived value that it's, that it's nicer and worth more. Uh, so yeah, I tend to do that. Plus jewelry is really small and it doesn't take up very much space so I can list it and forget it. Um, every now and then I'll come through and say, oh, this has been here for a couple of years. It's time to drop that price. Maybe it's not selling because of that. All right, before I jump to the next piece, let me go see what the chats. What's my opinion on keychains? I actually have a keychain today. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll, since you asked, I'll, I'll bring it up. Uh, I've sold a few keychains here and there, mostly vintage, but this one is not vintage, and it's more like a keychain. It's not even a keychain, is it? Oh, it is, like from a purse. So this is the keychain I picked up. I got it because it was unusual, right? It was two ninety nine, and it's got. Okay, let me just say before we go on, don't leave me any comments about how horrible my nails look. I know, <laughs> so they still, they I still haven't done my nails or cleaned them up, you know, or taken the polish off. So I just thought it was really unusual. Um, lots of clinky things on it and fun. I mean, it's kind of got an, not exactly Asian motif, but kind of tribal peace sign, a little dangly something. So we'll see how it does. Um, because it's not, what metal? What It's metal. I don't, I don't know exactly what, I'm guessing it's something that's coated. It looks Ronzi, <laughs> um, but yeah, there's, I have no idea. So that was $2.99. So yeah, we'll see. I mean, it's from the sack, which is a purse brand. So we'll see. It could be purse jewelry. It could be keychain, but it, it is a keychain and you could also wear it on the purse. So you can see it is a keychain. It can be used as a keychain, but it's also purse jewelry. I guess it's dealer's choice, you know? So um, this is one of the things I'm, I was taking a chance on. I was like, that's pretty cool. Okay. It looks pretty neat, nice quality and unusual. So, Hey, why not? Right. Give it a shot. That one. I don't know for sure, but yeah, I sold vintage, um, keychains. Pardon me. What's the, uh, there was one that I sold that was, uh, I'll look it up later, but it was like a plastic penguin or something like that. And it sold for, I don't know, $14 or something. And it was totally just a plastic green one. Um, green, green glittery. So, okay, next up, 
let's talk about this one since I kind of showed it already and I had something similar up. So this is something, a style that I like to buy where it's a mixed metal. Sometimes it looks like it's kind of melted on there around the edges. Maybe it looks a little more rustic. I don't know, handmade maybe. Um, this is the back on this one. It's got a place for a, a necklace and a, a brooch. You could wear it either way. Um, I paid $3.99 on this one. So twofold on this. It, I got it because of the style of it, because I have sold things that were this style before, and also sand dollar. There are people that like sand dollar, so I get the double duty on that. So let me share with you. I couldn't find one exactly like this that was a sand dollar, but I found one kind of like this style, this copper. They say that's an apple. It looks like a peach to me. Um, but I, I would probably try to sell it for more than this. And yeah, so... I mean, my guess is I'll probably put this up for about $25 for this. So, yeah, got it because of the style, got it because of the sand dollar. <laughs> yeah, so there's that one. Uh, if I go too fast and you guys have questions in the chat, let me know. And if you are watching later and you've got questions, leave it in the comment section. And let me know also, like, what was, if you're into jewelry, like, what was your gateway? What was, like, the thing? that you got you into it. You know, for me, it was men's accessories. What was it that was your gateway into jewelry? I want to know. I want to know what you guys started picking up. Okay, next up, I picked up these earrings. Um, they were $2.99. And honestly, I've never really picked up anything like them before. They have these kind of dark red cabochon ovals, you know, and these little dangles on them. But I got them because of the qual they look like nice quality the like i was saying before the the way they're put together looks really nice they look really professional and again there was no maker's mark on them they just looked like really nice quality so um i haven't looked them up yet but my guess is that i'm probably going to price them around 17.99 so for 3 bucks 17.99 yeah i think they'll do well <laughs> Your gateway was vintage jewelry, right? Oh my gosh. Um, I agree. <laughs> okay, next up, in these two I have shared before, but I am going to share again. I thought I'd grab them because of this, and actually I have another piece that I got recently. Um, are It's this sort of mixed metal, and what what is it called, like ha either hammered, this is more hammered, but then there's a style called Brutalist, which I'll share a little bit of that I like to pick up. These ones are probably going to end up right here once they're clean. Um, but if I was if I were going to sell them, I, I wouldn't sell them for anything less than $25, uh, maybe more, because I think they're amazing. So that's part of my, my pricing them as well. What would I pay for the, these? Um, so these ones, I'll probably, they'll probably go up for, you know, between $17 and $20. Yeah, so there's that. Um, neither of them are marked, but again, with the quality, like these just looked like nice quality pieces to me. They didn't, I don't know, they just did. They look like nicer quality. I don't know if it's because just with time looking at jewelry and seeing, you know, how they're sometimes coated and um, that you'll start seeing like, okay, this looks like a little bit nicer, right? Um, so your gateway was vintage curiosity, Sheila says. Um, Margaret was my gateway, thanks. <laughs> um, Brandy says beaded jewelry that you make, right? Some of that can be so beautiful. I, haven't, I don't think I've seen any of your stuff. Um, hand stamped jewelry, Not, Art Nouveau pendant, nice, nice. Okay, so next up, these were some that I bought and the reason, now, okay, I'm gonna explain these ones, let me show you. These ones I got, and you know how I was talking about quality? I keep saying, you know, they look like they're really good quality. These ones don't look, I mean, they look okay, but they don't look like they're amazing quality. I have some, oh, I should have brought them for an example, some Swarovski earrings that are not too dissimilar from this. They have the same kind of red stone and gold setting, um, but you can see like the prongs are pretty big. So that's a key for me that they're not super nice quality. The prongs are big. 
And then like the hanging part, it's kind of really, I don't know, it feels really like cheapy. I don't know exactly how to describe that. I went in and got these. It is open on the back, like so. I just, still, I still kind of liked them. Like I felt like I would wear them, even though they weren't, they didn't look like the super best quality. Um, now what did I get these for? I think the earrings were $2.99 or $3.99. I can't remember. I'll have to look over there and see. But aren't they pretty? Even though the prongs were like kind of big, I still thought they were nice. Gosh, I'm gonna have too many earrings by the time the show is over. Um, and I didn't, I didn't even check them. I mean, and again, I, I have been wrong before about the quality of things, but for the most part, this is kind of where I go with it. But yeah, the they are magnetic, so the the magnet is dragging them. I get that question too, like, well, what's with the magnet? So most of the time when things are magnetic, they're not fine, like fine gold. So that it probably won't be, you know, like 14 karat gold or probably won't be sterling silver if it's magnetic. There are always people that say, well, there's an exception to the rule. If the other percentage of this silver is a magnetic material, then it will pull and da 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 da. But for the most part, okay, this is a good rule of thumb. And there are things that will be marked because like the gold guy tells me, stamps are cheap. You know, it's cheap to stamp a piece of jewelry that's gold colored with a 14 karat gold stamp and make a ton more money on it because look, it's marked gold. If you don't know better and know that, oh well, why is it magnetic and why is it doing this and that and the other? Same thing with silver. So, <clears throat> um, Ophelia says, I got addicted in college when when I got bored and started ordering huge grab bags from Shop Goodwill, <laughs> I regret everything. I regret nothing. It's all a learning experience, right? You still haven't gone through it all. Oh, wow. You must have ordered a lot because I know how you can go through jewelry, right? Okay, next, I picked up, let's see, I know I have a, a, an image for this one. Again, another thing I like to pick up are um, figural things. Now, I picked up this. Christmas tree brooch. I come across Christmas tree brooches every now and then, um, but I don't always pick all of them up. The reason I chose to pick this one up, one, it wasn't missing any stones. It's marked JJ right there, if you can kind of see it, um, which stands for Johnette Jewelry, which occasionally I'll forget. <laughs> That's what it stands for. Um, but yeah, and, and again, it looked like really good quality. The stones looked really nice. They didn't look you know when you see stones, or maybe you don't, sometimes they look really shiny and more crystally than some of the rhinestones. I, don't, I should have brought examples of what was not, what I'm talking about for not, but so they looked like nicer. It was not nicely put together. So I found I finally found this one because Johnette Jewelry has made a number of Christmas tree brooches, but I was struggling to find this one. I finally found it on Etsy. Um, Let's see, so someone is selling it for $62 right here. Um, because I was seeing ones that kind of look like this, JJ, you know, for 38, for 22. And there are people that collect these. Look at this one, isn't it gorgeous? Um, with the green stones in there. So Christmas tree brooches, look at them. Look at this one, isn't that funky? I would have picked this up, oh yeah. Um, so yeah, if, if it's not missing stones and it looks like it's Pretty nicely put together. Here's another one, um, marquee cut rhinestone. So sixty-six dollars. So I think I did okay with this one. But take a look at figural things, and again, Christmas trees, depending on the quality of it, to see if it's something you might pick up. Okay. So I paid two ninety-nine for this one, and because I see two of them up there for that sixty-six dollar price. I'll probably say okay. I'll, I'll set my I'll set my price right around the same. So there we go. That would be awesome if I got them for sixty six dollars for that. Need to list it because as Jenny says, I don't know if Jenny's here, but she's got a group. It's Christmas all year on eBay, so people buy Christmas stuff all year round. Okay, one more sip. Hang on. The next thing I picked up was. And I shared this one before in a recent haul video, but I wanted to share it because it is weird. Maybe you might or might not pick it up, 
but it is a hand, somebody made it and it's just like gears. It's kind of that steampunk look. So somebody made this, it's got the watch, it's got gears, it's got a stone. And if you see the stones, it's somebody took a brooch that was like a tree that probably had like, kind of like a family tree brooch that has the, the mom would have all the, the stones, the birth stones. So somebody has taken, pardon me, sorry about that. Um, somebody has taken it and glued, it's kind of crudely put together, but it still works. Um, all of the bits on there. So I will probably put this up in the 30 or $40 range just because it's so unique. And I don't remember what I got it for because it was from a different haul. Okay. Um, Defra Cat says, the first pieces I sold were heavy metal band pins. I took a chance on them because of me. Oh, good. I hope you got a good profit for them. Especially now people are buying up like old denim and they're, you know, putting the the pins. Was that the X-File themes? No, it was Doctor Who. Do -de -do, do -do -do. That was my Doctor Who. Okay, so next, again, I really like picking up figural pieces. And again, I look for the quality. So I picked this one up also at the Goodwill. $2.99, $3.99. Again, it was right in there. So the reason I picked this one up was it looked like nice quality the enamel work was done really well it wasn't just like painted on the stones looked really nice the settings on the stones looked i don't know how else to describe it other than it's clean the lines are really clean they look set in there nicely it's not like wonky and sticking out it's not goopy or gloppy looking um it just has really clean lines everything looks like it's put together nicely you know, they colored inside the lines like like this one is looking for. And there is not a mark on the back, but let me show you the back on this one. So here's the back of it. I didn't find a mark on it, but I don't think it's going to matter um, because it's so nice. Plus, it's got those jewel tones, which seem to be pretty, pretty popular. It just looks like really nice. I'm surprised it's not marked because it's it just looks really really nice. So let me share with you, let me share with you on Etsy, like some of the different hot air balloons there. And there are people that collect, like I say, people collect everything. So there are collectors for hot air balloons. And again, this is one of those moments where it doesn't matter if it's not marked, somebody's going to look at it and say that it, I don't have one like that. That's beautiful. I love it. Um, so you can see, Pardon me, sorry about that, y'all. Um, some of these, even just flat little hot air balloon pins, close you, are going for, for good money. And I know, see I put enamel on here, because mine has got the enamel, but if I were to take that out, you could see other hot air balloon pins that are going, you know, 15, 20 dollars or more, depending on the one. Here's another JJ, Johnette Jewelry. Look at that one. Isn't it pretty? It's got those jewel tones. Um, again, so I'll probably put mine, I'll probably start it high just because I, I didn't see one just quite like it. So I'll probably start it around that $25 mark just because. So there's that. Okay, just because. I mean, I figure I can always bring the price down. Isn't that the worst feeling when you price it? You think you've done really well and you put it up and it sells like that. Um, and you're like, oh, maybe I should have priced it. You can always bring the price down. Okay, another thing I took a chance on, I picked up this necklace, and I couldn't for the life of me remember what this style was called. So I may be popping this into the group later. I did that yesterday. I, I run a jewelry group. It's a paid jewelry group. We keep it small and, and quaint, I guess is what the word for it. But I, I run a paid jewelry group and we share with each other. We learn every month. And so I popped something in yesterday that I needed help with because I couldn't, I was like, I know there's a name for this style of brooch and I can't remember. And yep, they helped me figure it out. So this again, same deal. I kept saying, it's, it's like Greek. It's not Greek. It's not, what is it? Anyway, I just thought it was really cool. The green, the black, I haven't seen something quite like it. It's weighty. Um, so it's kind of heavy. It does have a hang tag, which at first kind of looked 
um, like it was going to have a name on it, but it doesn't. So I went ahead with it. Um, I paid $3.99 and I'm, I'm guessing unless I find better uh, uh, the name for this style that I'll probably put it up 17, between $17.99 and $21.99 um, unless I find out that it's a certain style. Egyp Egyptian, I was like, it's something like that. I can't think. And I was describing it. I was typing it in. I couldn't quite. So we'll see. It may be, a, I may end up putting up for more than that. But that would be my my starting point. Looks like something Cleopatra would wear, right? Isn't it cool? I mean, I, it's really cool. So, wow, I don't really wear this style, but not, not that bad. It doesn't look too bad. Okay, so we'll see. So that was three ninety nine. Chances are it'll probably go up around the twenty dollar mark. Um, maybe more. Maybe more. Okay, so again, still you know taking chances. I'm still taking chances on stuff all the time. This is one I didn't look up. It does have a mark on the back, so maybe I should have. But I I picked up this pin. It is a pig. It is not at all my style. It's not at all something I particularly like. But I got it because I know that there are people out there that collect pigs and that will think, hey, I don't have that pig. Um, it's pink. It's got some paint swirls in there. It's cute, I guess. <laughs> And it's marked TC. That blister on my hand is bothering me. TC. And I I didn't look it up, so I'm not sure. Is he a flying pig? He's not. It, no, he doesn't have any wings, but he looks like he could fly if he really thought hard enough about it. So um, I paid $2.99. $1.99. Gosh, I have all the prices over here, and of course I just... Uh, they wrote them on here. We'll say two ninety nine just for fun. How about that? So um, my guess is, you know, two ninety nine. He'll go for at least. I'll put him up for at least fifteen dollars, if not more. If I don't, if I don't find something like it, I generally price it higher uh, because somebody again will say, "Oh my gosh, I don't have something that looks like that. That's perfect," and they'll want that particular one, and they'll be willing to pay pay more for it. Um, Hang on one second. I'm missing the something in the chat. So I think maybe they're talking not to me. That's okay. All right. So next, um, another thing I got is this brooch that has a pewter look to it. I bel I think it might be pewter, but I don't want to say. Yeah, it probably is. I, my guess is it's pewter. Um, the back is different than I'm used to having on pewter brooches, but that's okay. So pewter will look kind of like a silver, almost like a like a silver wood if it was tarnished, but it's more matte, I would say, and usually a little more even toned as far as, you know, with some of the silver, it'll be tarnished in certain spots. Um, once you get, a, once you have an eye for it, I, I ask, I've been asked, like, how do you tell if it's pewter? How can you tell? Like, I think once you, once you get it, you, you know, you see it. So this was just, again, really unique. It's not marked. And I just thought it was really cool, kind of open work. It's got, I don't know what kind of plants. They almost look like cherries, but I don't think so. I don't think that's what that is. Um, so I'll have to look it up and figure it out. But um, $2.99, this will, again, probably go for, I'll probably post it around $17.99 to $19.99, somewhere in that range. So, but I picked it up because... I generally, if it's a nice piece that looks pewter, I'll pick it up. And then, again, it's kind of a figural artistic thing with the plants and the, are they berries? I guess they're flower pods. Yeah, it's nice, right? It's almost like a Celtic look to it, if you know what I mean. Even though it's not like a Celtic knot, it still has that kind of feel, you know. Um... Yeah, O-M-F-U-G says, six out of my last 24 sales have been jewelry, some of it men's, yeah. Okay, so uh, some other things that I picked up. I got these, I'm gonna show you all three of them. <laughs> They're adorable. Okay, I paid a dollar each on these earrings, and I can probably say I would not have paid a dollar for them if they didn't have the card. So, 
the I think the card is what's going to sell them because if you look at them they are not really good quality you can see that the yellow is going down into the leaves and there's I mean it looks kind of like a mess honestly so if I had seen these sitting there and they were like give me a dollar for these corn earrings I would have said no way on this planet will I give you a dollar for those messy corn earrings now cute like corn like weird food earrings if they're done well sure why not these ones are not done super nice the paint is kind of a mess um but because they're on these cards i think someone's gonna want them because of that now i did make sure before i bought them to peel the price tags up to make sure it didn't peel off one of them peeled a little bit on there but the other two peeled off no problem and left the cards intact. Um, so yeah, that's why I bought these because I think the, the cards are gonna be what sells them. So they look like Campbell soup cans or something like that. Uh, I looked it up and I couldn't find these out there. So I'm not exactly sure. I'm gonna do a little more searching. I'll sell them individually and honestly, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm tempted to go like 15 bucks just because of the card that they're on. I may be smoking it or not. <laughs> we'll see. But that's, I mean, that's the reason I bought these. Again, if they had just been these loose for a buck, mm -mm, no way. So, yeah, there's those. Another thing I got as well were these. Little Mermaid earrings, and again, the quality is not amazing. You know, she looks pretty bad. The the detailing is not at all good, but because they were on the card, the Little Mermaid applause, uh, they're vintage. Yeah. Oh my gosh, caution! <laughs> this caution. <laughs> the caution says, caution. It contains functional sharp points. <laughs> really. Thanks, applause. I needed I needed that on my earrings, but um, again, they're yeah. I mean, the the quality of them, the painting is just kind of not great. But I know there are people that collect Little Mermaid. It has the original card. They're vintage, so that's what I'm trying to find a date on there. I don't see a date, um, but they are marked. You know, Disney applause. Blah blah blah. So there's that. Um, I don't know what I'm going to put on these, like as far as price, because I haven't looked them up, but I know that they may go up higher depending on what I see out there because they're on the original card, even though it's got a little bend in it. That's okay. Right? So we'll see. That's why I got those. A couple other pieces, and then I bought some stuff at this garage sale today, so I will show you. At least they're functionally hazardous, Richard says, yeah. This is another piece that I got that is because of that, what I was telling you about Brutalist. Um, so here's this brooch that I picked up and it looks like it's got dings, it's like really sharp edges. It, it's kind of rough put together. Um, so I pulled up, let's see, where is it? I pulled up some Brutalist type jewelry and I, I generally do pretty well with it. That's kind of there. Okay, let me pull it up so you can see what I'm talking about. Disney will sell, yeah. Okay, here we go. Where is it? Um, so when you see jewelry that's like mixed metal, look at this dog, Keith Herring, Memphis era dog, right? 95 bucks. It's like weird sometimes. It might, you know, look really artsy fartsy, you know, <laughs> geometric. Sometimes, where was like, here's one. Weird, like abstract brooch. I, I hate to use the word weird, but you know, it's different. And and some of it looks like, you know, just kind of messy and I don't know, that's why I call it brutalist style, you know? So I am not exactly sure what I'm gonna put on this one. It's not a huge piece. It doesn't have a whole lot of detail, but I'm guessing I'll probably, I mean, at least $15, pay $2 for it. So at least $15. Is that an acid wash piece? Oh, this one has the Southwest. Yeah, maybe it's the stone in it. Maybe it's, I don't know, it looked kind of like a guitar pick to me too. I don't know. 
I mean, I'll have to look closer at the chips if they are just like glass. Are they blue glass in there? They might be. My grandmother used to take blue glass when she would do her china painting and she would like put it in her kiln on her china and it would like melt on there. So it kind of has that like that look to it. Um, thanks, Veronica. I wish you could. She's like, I wish I could come do your nails for you. Yeah, um, husband lost his job, so I had to quit getting my nails done. And I don't have any nail polish remover in the house, so that was the breaks. I guess I could go buy some, but that means going to the store. <laughs> okay, too big for a fit. Yeah, I know, I know, too big. Um, so the next one that I picked up, I'll explain why I got it. So I got this one. Oh, before I forget, go over there and hit the thumbs up. Looks like a warrior shield. Oh, that's a good that's a good um, keyword I could use. Thanks, Sherry. I got this one because it is like a, a stone. So generally, things that are look like nice pieces that are natural stone type jewelry, I'll pick up. I paid four dollars for it. I am not exactly sure what kind of stone that is. There's some loose facets to it. Honestly, it kind of looks like, you know how I talk about Kendra Scott sometimes? It kind of looks like how she, because she uses some natural stone and she'll facet it and stuff like that. So it almost has that kind of style to it, but I haven't seen any marks on it. That would be awesome because that would take the price right up. Let me look it over one more time while I'm sitting here. Mm, no, but I, I still think it, it won't have any problem selling. So I paid $4 and I'm guessing I'll probably put it up probably towards the $30 range, depending on what else I see out there. So there's that. Okay, again, keep going like, cause we did get it in the same shop where my sister got those Kendra Scott earrings at the Goodwill over there. Uh, no, but what I'll probably do is look up, it would have been branded, Never mind, Margaret, you know it will. But also, um, when I'm looking at things that have cords, I'll look to make sure that the the cords are not kind of nasty. Like if they've been worn a whole lot, they'll start to fray or get fuzzy or sometimes look like they've got body oils on them, you know, and they'll start. So that's something else to look out for when you're picking stuff up. Ask yourself, well, I need to put this on a new chain. Is it worth it? Maybe it is. Maybe it's not. Okay, Disney people. I know they make fakes of these, but this is one of the Disney pins. Um, I have picked up Disney pins before and I was told, you know, sometimes they're faked and there's a lot that goes into this. And who, did Jason have, some, I think Jason had somebody on recently, but um, that sold Disney pins. So I may have to ask her. This is a 2001 and it's kind of a larger one than, I, than I've seen with other Disney pins. So we will see. It's kind of patriotic, so that's nice. Um, I just picked it up because I knew a little bit about Disney pins and that some of them can go for good money. So I thought, okay, I'll go ahead and give it a shot. A buck 99, 99 cents, right? So there's that. Okay, then, sorry, my throat's a bit dry. The one you had is not a fake. I have the same one I got from Disneyland. Oh, good, good, good. Um, do I ship jewelry in padded envelopes or boxes? It depends. So like this, I would put it in a padded envelope because there's nothing that's going to break off. There's no stones or little bits that can bend or break. However, I'll, when I put it, I don't just put it in like that. I'll have it in a baggie and then I have a card that wraps around it. So it's still protected um, in there. But things that have things um, like stones that might come loose, like those have stones or dangles or things that might get smushed or broken or come off. Um, those I use the six by, six by four by four box. Um, so yeah, that's what I do. So these are some other ones <laughs> that I picked up. I just really like the flowers. They kind of, what do you think? Like dog, I always get a mixed up. It's not dogwood. There's another one that's kind of similar to that. I got them because I thought they were pretty. They were $2.99. Um, so that's another way I pick up jewelry is if I if I think I would wear it. So I picked them up because I was like, oh, I, if those don't sell, I would wear them. And then I showed my husband. I was like, what do you think of these? And he goes, they're interesting. <laughs> so I'm like, I'll take that as you don't like them. So 
we'll see. I mean, $2.99, I'm guessing I'll probably put them around the $15 mark. Yeah, right? They look like something I would wear. I still kind of like them. Maybe he doesn't know what he's talking about. <laughs> Maybe. Um, another one. Okay, here's an example of where it's like, eh, it's not really put together awesome. The back of it, you know, it looks like the metal's kind of like molten and it just happened to solidify. Plumeria, thank you. Okay. Um, you know, so the back of it's just like, okay. It's, uh, but it's a dragonfly, so it's a figural thing. People collect dragonflies. And then the front is kind of cool. Like, it's not missing any stones that I've seen so far. Is it? Now that I'm looking, is that a stone missing or is it just a red? Darn, okay, now it is missing a stone. Okay. Um, there, I have to decide if that's supposed to be missing or if it's a missing stone. So, uh, I might still do okay. So, cute dragonfly pin. That's why I picked it up. Um, if I decide that that's not missing and it's supposed to be like that, then it'll probably go up for, you know, 15, 17 bucks or more, depending. But I'll have to decide. Let me look. This is one of those moments like I, and I know I've got friends in the jewelry group that say, just get a little rhinestone and glue it in there. It's no big deal. But I have not really dove into that yet. I think it's missing one. Okay. We'll set it to the side. I missed it. These things happen. Um, so a couple more things, and then I'll show you what I got at the garage sale today. I picked these up, and they're a brand that's, called Best, which is not an awesome seller. I've sold like charm bracelets that were from this brand, but I just thought these were really nice and I would be able to sell them. So that was $6.99, that's a lot for me to pay. I just thought that the cross with all the different colored, they're not actually stone, but all the painted like cabochons on there, I don't know, I thought it would do okay. So then there's earrings as well. I I don't know. I took a chance. I paid up for them. And I will probably not sell them together because I don't do too well with um, lot, not lots, but, oh, what do you call it? Maybe it is lots. Okay. With things that are partnered up. Okay. So $6.99, $3.99. I'll probably get like a black cord you know i've got some in the room you know probably put something like that with it and and put it up for probably about 30 bucks um with the earrings i'll probably put them up for around 17. like that yeah and see how they do let them ride um i also picked this up which you might ask yourself why <laughs> so i picked this up it was 2.99 it's a bag of hair stuff but the reason I picked it up is I have a couple of barrettes in there that I really liked. So this big barrette here, um, and then there's another one which I've sold one very similar to, let's see if I can get you to see it, in there with these suns. I've sold one very similar to this sun one for about $15. And there's another like blingy one. I'll have to see if it's not missing any stones. So I'll probably put this up for 10 or 15 bucks and I'll probably put the sun one up for probably about 15 bucks as well. So the rest of the stuff will go in the garbage. <laughs> now for what I got today. Um, oh, when I got this too, again for the packaging because they're very funky. They were at 99 cents, so it's like, okay. The packaging kind of makes it cool, so. Took a chance. I bought this jewelry, and as you can see, it doesn't, well, it doesn't look like much. Some of it looks like, eh, it's okay. Just kind of like loose stuff. But my, I'm trying to get it where you can see it. Let me show you what was in there. This was in there, okay. This was in there solo, and I could see a scratch mark. You know, I didn't have my loop with me, but I could see that, you can even see it right there. I can see there's something marked on this earring. It's a solo earring. It was in there with the stuff. Um, I saw a couple things in the box that I thought, okay, I'd buy that. There are a couple brooches, but I didn't want to walk up to the guy at the garage sale and say, 
excuse me, how much for this earring? You know, I didn't want to do that because that would like say, you know, then it would cue him into like, oh, let me take a closer look at this. So I just decided, well, everything in there is kind of marked 50 cents, a dollar. I mean, he might have been just like, oh, I'll just take it. But he might not have. So I was like, okay, let me just take it all over there and say, okay, how much for everything? Um, but I'll show you. There are a couple brooches, too, that will would, what's that for, I think, still good money. So one of the brooches that was in there that I liked was this one that had, has these flowers. This one was marked 50 cents. Again, there's no maker's mark, but it's nice. Um, sets. There you go. A lot of sets. So... And Veronica, what I'll do as well with the when I list them is I'll put in the listing on Etsy. I, I'm not sure I can do it with eBay. As long as it's in eBay, I'll have to find out. Um, is say you know the matching earring is here, and I'll post the listing matching necklace here and post the the link for it. Um, I probably would not have bought this guy by himself, but now I'm looking at him. He's kind of cute, so. I'll probably still list him. Um, again, this was in there. Probably wouldn't have picked it up. It's a hammer flag. Um, and this necklace that has a zipper, which I actually did look up, and there's one. So it's almost like a bolo tie. Uh, come on now. You know, it zips and unzips. <laughs> and I and I did see one up. It, was, it surprised me for what it was listed for. So maybe, you know, here's one, pretty much identical, that's listed for $28. So... Why not? I, I'll probably put it up right around the same. Isn't Santa cute? Yeah, probably. But I probably wouldn't have picked him up otherwise. But now that I'm looking at him, I'm like, oh, he's not so bad. Okay. <laughs> I've seen worse. I've seen worse Santas. Um, again, this is another one that was there that maybe I wouldn't have picked up. But again, I think it's, I'll probably still list it. It was a quarter for that one. This bracelet is marked 925 silver I think it had you can kind of see where the there's like a copper color I think maybe it used to have a wash on it you can see in the back where it hasn't been rubbed off kind of where it's indented I think it used to have like a color wash or was plated with something else sorry about those nails again um, but it is marked 925 it's not magnetic so we'll see hello hello um I don't see Avon on it on the stiff Wait, are you talking about? You have to let me know which one you mean. Um, there are a couple other things in here too. This one is a Sarah Coventry brooch, which I will list. It's a big old pearl, not real. I'm not going to put it on my teeth though. 75 cents, and it is marked right there. This I probably would have picked up anyway. One is Sarah Coventry, 75 cents, and it's a big funky pearl, which would look good on a blazer, you know. Like my power blazer. And then this is a Boy Scout pin that was down in there too, which I don't know if it has a value or not. So, But the the earring that was in there, oh, I meant to weigh it before the show. Um, so I paid, you know, less than five bucks for all this jewelry. Um, and then this was in there too. And it is it marked 14K. So that's awesome. It'll go, I have a little scrap bag that it'll go into. And then finally, I picked this up today at first, and I'm so glad I didn't put it back, you guys. Isn't that pearls gigantic? Um, so I got this guy at the Goodwill. Uh, he was $3.99. I just saw his head and was like, wow, there are people that love birds, and it's a macaw, a parrot, something. And he had a big green eye, which I thought was cool. So they set it aside. You know, I did my shopping. When I got back, I wanted to take a closer look at it. And I saw what looked like, let me take it out. It looks like, at first it looks like a stone's missing. And I think the stone is just uh, dark in color. And I, I've got to see if I can, you can see right in his head. There's one that's like a darker gray. The stone is in there. It's just dark for some reason. And I don't know how to clean it, but I want to find out. And the reason I want to find out, oh, it is missing it's another stone there. But still, once I flipped it over, I didn't flip it over. You can see right there is missing another little stone. Uh, when I flipped it over, and I didn't do this in the store, I just thought the parrot was awesome. Talk about good quality. You know, you can see, you know, the feathers look really nice. The lines are really clean. The eye, the beak. 
And then I noticed it had a mark on the back. I don't think you're going to be able to see it, but it's marked Christian Dior. So I don't know that it'll matter. Rhinestones turn dark when they die. <laughs> um, so the it's marked C-H-R Dior. So I'll have to look up this guy. So I think maybe even though he's missing a stone, he might still be valuable. And even though he's got a dark rhinestone, yeah, for four dollars. And I don't think, you know, I know that I know there's fakes out there, but I really don't think he is a fake. Just the quality of how he's made is is just, I don't know, amazing. It's amazing. Uh, are you kidding if that's an older DR? Right? I, I just have to look him up because I didn't I didn't even like flip him over. I was just like, I like big girl jewelry. He is a good example of something that's well made. And then right before I hit live, I was like, oh, there's a mark on here. Yeah. On the bird, you can't really tell it's missing a stone. Yeah, it's, and I didn't even see it till I got it up close in the camera when I could see it right there. It's missing. Oh, it's, it's missing another one over there. Yeah, it is. Okay, that's cool. But I, like I said, I, I, I don't know because it's a Dior how much that will really matter. I don't know how to replace teeny tiny rhinestones, so. So anyway, there's that. We'll end on Mr. Dior for sure, <laughs> for sure. So I hope that you guys enjoyed the, this format a little better. Um, I'm not going to smell it. Um, guys, if you are not here live, come and hang out because there's lots of great people in the chat. Uh, and they like some of them like to try to make me laugh and and all. So yeah, I if you like this format where I talk a little bit more, not just like here's what I bought, here's what I'll sell it for, where I talk a little bit more about why I picked up what I picked up, uh, leave me a thumbs up and leave a comment down below uh, because I go through my videos and I look and see like, okay, well, this worked well. People responded to this. They like this format better than just a straight haul video or not. So yeah, my kitty. Um, so I really do take into account what kind of uh, feedback I get so that I can create better videos and information for you guys. So definitely, you know, leave that thumbs up if you liked. Leave me a comment letting me know what your gateway jewelry was and a comment letting me know if you like this format. And I can do that a little bit more, um, whether it's with new hauls and a talking through or you're just like, just show me the goods. <laughs> so uh, jewelry jars will always be just show me, just show me what you got, you know, but, but the other hauls I can take a little, a little more time when I pick have hand-picked jewelry that I've picked up. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I will talk to you tomorrow, I'm sure. So thanks, everybody, for coming to hang out, and I'll see you later. Bye.